So we're here at uh, Linaro Connect, and uh, who are you? My name is Arndt Bergman, I'm the maintainer of the arm sock tree, which is um, um, a kernel tree in which we maintain the, um, all the sub-architectures of the ARM architecture. I maintain that together with Olaf Johansson, who has been very active for the last merge window for 3.5, uh, while I've been looking into building multiple platforms in the ARM architecture together, which has never been possible before. So, how much work goes into doing what you do? Um, for the multi-platform kernels, we've basically worked on this for the last one and a half years in Linaro um, with multiple people doing it step by step in very, uh, very different areas. And now for the first time, we've come to a point where we can actually build a few things together. So what few things are you building together? Um, we have, um, in Linaro, we have five platforms that we're primarily interested in because they are made by our members. We have the ARM Versatile Express platform, the ST Ericsson U8500, the Texas Instruments OMAP, the Samsung Exynos, and Freescale's IMX. And we're building all of them except for the Samsung one right now, and we will follow up with that later. So we can build four out of five sub-architectures in the Linux kernel into one single binary that hopefully we will at some point be able to actually boot on some of the machines. So does that mean you take one piece of software and you can run on any device? Yes, we're basically doing what the other architectures have been doing before. It's much harder for ARM because each of those SOCs has its own system architecture, not instruction set architecture, but they do the timers and interrupts and um, pin control, clock management, all of those things in different ways. And traditionally, we've, we've had to decide at compile time which one of those you choose. Um, and for each of those subsystems, we spent work into making it possible to build it together um, across multiple platforms. And now we've come to the point where we have enough of those subsystems converted so that these platforms actually go together into one binary. So that means you can build one kernel um, that ha enables all of them, and eventually we will be able to have one SD card image that you can plug into each of the machines that we're working with, and it works without changes. So you need a different SD card for each machine? Or well, is it just the same will work everywhere? Right now you can have the same root file system image, but the SD card contains also the kernel, in addition to the root file system image, and the kernel can be built from the same sources already, um, but you always have to build it with a different configuration. And with, with the latest work, you can have a single configuration that you build once and run everywhere. So, how about all the other ARM processors in the world? What can they do with Linaro, or should they also join, and will that add more work to this whole process, or how does it work? Um, I focused on the ones that we, are, that we have in Linaro because they are the ones that we can test internally here. We can do the same thing for actually all the others too. Um, for some it may be really, really easy. For others it may be hard or nearly impossible to include them. And it depends totally on, the, on their maintainer's work to get that included. Obviously we want to have everyone included. Um, I just limited the work for now to, to the ones that we're most interested in. So. So that means if each company making their own processor contributes maintainers, which means programmers, mm -hmm. they can be part. It's just about the work to make sure everything is synced up or? Yes. So first and foremost, the, uh, all the platforms need to have all their code upstream. And in Linaro, we've been very good at upstreaming the source code for the individual SOC architectures. And some other companies are very good at that too, outside of Linaro, and, so, and a lot of other companies have not participated in upstreaming at all. So if you don't upstream your code, obviously you cannot build a kernel that includes your code and the others because everyone else doesn't have your code. But for those that already have the code upstream, it's, it's just a little bit of work missing to make it possible to, boot it, to build that together with our platforms. So is that the core of what Linaro is for? Is, uh to synchronize everything or make everything compatible everywhere? 
Well, the kernel is just one, one of the pieces that Linaro is working on, but it's a very essential piece, and this is one of the original goals that we set when, when Linaro was started. So we've come, it's, it's a major milestone for Linaro's mission. So uh, what did you do before Linaro? Before Linaro, I was working on a lot of other architectures. One of my works was involving um, new architecture parts. So in, in the Linux kernel, besides ARM, we have about 25 other CPU architectures. And I am reviewing any new contributions where someone ports Linux to a new CPU architecture and wants to get that upstream. So my work in Linaro has been on the sub-architectures of, of ARM. And it's very similar work, it's just, since many of the sub-architectures in, in the ARM architecture are just as big as the other CPU architectures with all their code. So how do you view your job? Does it feel, uh, to you, uh, can you manage? Uh, or is it overwhelming? Or is it, uh, or is it just straight ahead? You just, it, there's a lot of uh, ideas you needed from the community to make things work, or is it everything, you can see the light in the tunnel, what's it called? I, I never thought I would be in this position that I'm uh, co-maintaining one of those really important trees, because ARM is now a massively important CPU architecture. It's one of the two CPU architectures that really matter, and we hope to be the most important one in the future. Um, and there are so many people, like uh, some, sometimes it's 5 to 10 percent of the patches going into the Linux kernel that go through my hands in the ARM SOC tree. Um, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> so it means like uh, any Linux device in the world, not only ARM, gets that same kernel? Or is it uh, 5 to 7 percent? Can you describe so what, the, what those, it is? Those are the patches going into the kernel for the ARM architecture through the ARM SLC tree that I can maintain. Um, and those are only ARM specific patches. All right, and uh, so what's going to happen in the weeks ahead, months ahead? So with, with a single kernel image, obviously we now get, need to get it running. So the work that I've done was um, to, so to, say, to, to just build it together. I haven't actually booted it. And as we're speaking now, um, our developer, Sean Guo, is working on getting it to run on the first board and then go from there to the other five boards, um, taking the, the kernel that we have now, getting it to run, and then pr um, progressively taking that kernel um, and replacing the separate kernels that we're now using for our testing so that we can actually have uh, one kernel um, for our testing internally to Linaro, and after that, get other people to do the same thing. Like we could have a, um, people like Cyanogen mod can use a single kernel that works on all the Android phones, independent of who's the manufacturer. And distributions like Red Hat and Debian can use one kernel that works um, on all the all the devices they support, which is a big help for them. Um, because right now they have to maintain one kernel for each board and have have to do bug fixes across multiple packages. They they really want to have only one package for the kernel. And uh, when let's say Samsung or all these companies release phones, there's a big likelihood that they can just really use all the work that comes out of Linaho. Yes, that's and that's completely unrelated from the um, from the multi-platform work. So the, in in a phone. That is, first of all, a very deeply embedded platform, so you build a kernel specifically for your device. But in the aftermarket, you can have a kernel that actually runs on, on all sorts of devices. And um, when a company comes out with multiple phones, they can have the same kernel running on all of them. Do you think uh, it's going to work before the end of the Linaho Connect, all the five boards? No. Booting up? No? No. I really hope that we can have, uh, by the end of this connect, have one kernel that works on two of them. Two of them. Two of them. And then we can see. It. Which two? Um, Freescale is most likely one to get working first. Um, Versal Express is probably second. Samsung will be last because we have a few issues that we need to solve first. Um, OMAP, I don't think we can get done this week, but it won't be all that hard.